Hi everybody, Harris here with iDownloadBlog. Today we're taking a look at the brand new M4 MacBook Pro. Now this video will be helpful for you whether you got the base model cheapest M4 MacBook Pro, the M4 Pro, or even the M4 Max. In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing, a hardware tour, an accessory tour, software basics, Apple intelligence, deep dive, and a few other software tips and tricks. So inside the packaging with this, it's a very similar experience to other Macs in the past. You get the MacBook Pro up top and I opted for the 14 inch in the black color. Underneath that, you get the braided textured MagSafe cable. And then underneath that, you'll get an instruction manual with almost nothing inside it, just a little bit of basic information. And then finally, you do get your wall charger, which is 96 watts with this Pro model. Or if you get one of the cheaper models, you will get a smaller charger. So first thing I wanna do is a basic hardware tour of this device. So here I do have it in the black color, as you can see. And this will be the cleanest that this Mac will ever be. And the alternative to this is the silver color. So no more space gray. And this black doesn't seem to be super black to me. This still looks kind of grayish, depending on the light and the angle. You can see what that looks like. On the right hand side of your device, you have HDMI, USB-C, which is Thunderbolt 5, and a SDXC card slot. And on the left side of your device, you have that MagSafe charger, which I actually almost never use because I just plug my Mac into a USB-C dock right into my monitor. And then you have two more USB-C ports and your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which does not work for microphone, unfortunately. And that's all the ports you have on this device. Opening it up, you have your trackpad at the bottom and you have your touch ID sensor, which also works as a power button to sleep your device. Or if you ever need to completely shut it down and power it off, you can hold that down for a manual shutdown. Now, some things about the navigation of the Mac are exactly the same and some things have changed. So some things that are the same are the three buttons up top, X to close out of an application, just like that. The minus button will just minimize it and put it down in your dock. And then the green button gives you several resize options. So if you wanna do left half, right half, top half, bottom half, or you can do full screen or split screen, now, one thing that's a bit newer is that if you drag to the top and kind of hold it there, it'll allow you to send it full size, but that's different than full screen. If you click the green, it'll send it full screen and kind of take away everything. And then to get out of that, you have to drag up and then click the green again. And you can always drag to resize to your exact liking. And you can drag to the left to go left half, right to go right half and so on. Now, one app that I use all the time is Notes. So I wanna show you a couple things in Notes. So you have your note that you're in. If you double click it, it'll bring that note up full screen, which is great. And say you close the main Notes application and you wanna get back to all of your notes. If you do Command-0, it'll open up all your notes again, which is a great feature. So let's go ahead and talk about Apple Intelligence, which is one of the big reasons to get a new Mac. The M4 does support Apple Intelligence and not all the features are available at the time of this filming, but hopefully by the time you are watching, you have most of these features. So starting out with macOS Sequoia 15.1, Siri is basically smarter and starting with macOS Sequoia 15.2, Siri will be enhanced and equipped with chat GPT. By the time of the recording, I don't have that. So as of right now, we have summarized notifications, which basically gives you a contextual summary, an AI summary of your notifications. So you don't necessarily have to read through all of them or check to see if it's important. It'll try to tell you that. There's now options to speak to Siri as well as type to Siri, which I think on a Mac is going to be a little bit more useful. I generally don't speak to Siri. So if you go to the top right hand corner of your screen, you can see the Siri button there. You can tap and hold and then speak to Siri, or you can just tap it and then you can type. You can also click the little dictation button if you then want to talk. So you can ask about anything and right now it's not dramatically improved over previous versions, but basically as soon as it gets chat GPT, it'll be able to start doing much more advanced things such as uh, very specific catered responses instead of just relying on what's available from Google. So you are able to do more system settings such as setting timers and looking for different settings via Siri right now. But if I were to ask, you know, 10 things to do in Orange County, California, it's just going to Google that as of right now or, or pull something from Wikipedia. But soon when it has ChatGPT, it'll actually be able to give you that custom 
catered 10 suggestions of things to do, which is just infinitely more useful than a generic Wikipedia response. Now, this is a similar but different feature from the spotlight search, which you could always access by clicking command and space. So while that's still very useful for searching things on your device, especially files, I think Siri is going to be more commonly used now. So you can always go up to the icon in the top right hand corner, like I showed you before, but there's also several shortcuts that you can choose from. I have it on press either command key twice. So now if you do that on your keyboard, click, click, and you can see type of Siri turns on. Now other new features in Apple intelligence includes mail. So you have priority messages that show up top as well as message summaries, which works in a very similar way to the notification summaries and quick replies that will help you to reply more quickly. So you can see here, I have an email pulled up. If I click the summarize button up top, it will give me a summary of that email so that I don't have to go through and read it. And if I click reply, you can see if you click, you get several options. So here is thanks for the info and got it. And you can see it did a smart response just like that. Now one cool feature is if I highlight this text or really any text across the entire Mac operating system and then click the little Apple intelligence button, I get several really cool options. So I can proofread it, which will check for any mistakes or I can have it completely rewritten. You can choose which type of style and tone you want, whether it be friendly, professional, or concise. So if you have something that's really long, you just want to go down to a few sentences, you can click concise. And you can also have it auto sort the text into a summary, to key points, a list, or a table, which is awesome if you're dealing with just an assortment of different facts or data, you can have Apple intelligence automatically summarize those and reformat them into these options here. Now within Apple Notes, we also have a new voice memo feature. So if you're ever in a lecture or a meeting or anything that you need to record voice memo to, you can start recording and it will also transcribe your audio just like this. So right now it is recording and transcribing everything I say. So if we click this little transcribe button at the bottom, you can actually see in real time the text that I'm saying, and that will be linked inside of this note so that you can look at this later. So it's a really powerful integration of voice memos, transcription, and notes. And you can also see this summary button right here, which if you click, it'll try to give you a summary. Now there are several new features in Photos as well, some which I like and some I just find more confusing than helpful. But one cool one is called Cleanup. So for instance, let's say I have this picture from the beach and I wanna do a cleanup. I can click Edit in the top right-hand corner and then clean up. Now this is download, I can simply select any of these signs, Apple will identify it and gets rid of it. So you can see it actually worked really well there. So I'll do that for this sign and this sign. And you can see that one didn't work as well. So I'll go back down and there's a little bit of residue there. And you can see just like that, it is a much better looking shot. At least it doesn't have those distractions in it. Let's try it just for the stop sign, even though I do like the stop sign being there. And you can see just like that, it did a pretty decent job. So let's go ahead and see what it was like before and after. Definitely not perfect. You can still kind of see the shape distortions in the water, but a pretty powerful feature nonetheless. Okay, now I wanna talk about some other software tips and tricks. So one of the ones I use most frequently is Command Shift 3, 4, and 5. Command Shift 3 will take a screenshot of your whole screen and you can see it pops up in the bottom right hand corner. And if you secondary click it or right click it, you have several options, including saving it to your desktop, documents, clipboard, if you just wanna paste it somewhere else, you can mark it up, show it in Finder and more. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this. If you do Command Shift 4, it'll actually give you the ability to select what you want to take a screenshot of, and then it will do the same thing, save it to the bottom right hand corner, and Command Shift 5 allows you to take a screen recording, which is very handy. And your options down here are to record the entire screen, just the window that you have selected, or a selected portion of your screen. Choose your options, including if you want audio, and if you want to show your mouse clicks. And then you can go ahead and click record. So that's what I'm using right here for this tutorial. 
Now, one really cool feature is that if you actually hold the control key when letting go of your screenshot, so I'll do command shift four, and I'll just highlight the finder down here in the corner, and you see I'll drag that, and now I'll hit the control key and let go. It'll automatically save that to my clipboard. So let's say now I have a note open, I can do command V and we'll paste just that. So that's a really handy feature. It's command shift three, four or five. And then if you hold the control key, when you let go, it'll save that to your clipboard, which is great. Now control center is a pretty powerful feature of the Mac. So if you go up to the top right hand corner and click, you can see control center. And if you want any of these options to be in your menu bar, you can actually just click and drag. So I'll go ahead and bring focus mode over here because I use that all the time as well as Bluetooth, because I use that a lot as well. Now, if you go into your settings and you search trackpad, you get several options you might want to customize. So the first thing I do is turn on tap to click, which simply means you don't have to click all the way in order to kind of actually emulate a click. You can just tap on the trackpad. So I like that feature on. And if you go to trackpad options, I like to turn on use trackpad for dragging. And I do it with three finger drag. This simply lets me drag around windows using a three finger gesture on the Mac so I don't have to click and drag. I've always liked turning this feature on. Now, hot corners is something that I've always liked doing as well. So I typically will have a desktop to the top right hand. So if I drag my mouse to the top right hand corner, it'll clear all the windows and I can quickly access my desktop. Apple has built in a feature now that you can just tap on your desktop to do the same thing. I don't really like that. I just like having the top corner on. I don't tend to use the quick note, so I generally turn that off. And the bottom left, I like doing start screensaver. Just in case I'm ever walking out of my office, I just like having the screensaver turned on. Now, if you go into your control center, you do have a few options. You can show the percentage in your status bar for battery. So you can get an exact percentage and if you go to clock, you can actually add seconds. You can also add music recognition for Shazam and other features, depending on exactly what you're looking for. Now, if you're ever trying to get quickly into your settings app, of course, you can always go down to settings or you go up to the top left hand corner and do system settings. But what's even quicker than that is doing option and then you can click either the two brightness buttons or the various media buttons, and those will launch those sections specifically. So if you go to the brightness buttons, it'll launch display. So if you need to change your display settings, it'll take you right there, but it also just launches settings in general. Or if you do option and then the volume buttons, it'll take you into your sound settings, which is very quick if you ever need to change your sound settings. Or again, it just launches your settings very quickly. It's, it's the fastest way of launching it is by doing the option brightness or option volume. Now, one new feature in macOS Sequoia is this iPhone mirroring feature, which is really powerful. So basically, this allows you to completely connect to your iPhone without having your iPhone even on you or, or around you. It can be in a different room or in your pocket altogether. If you want to use any apps that are specific to your iPhone or change something that you know is just on your iPhone. Now, your iPhone can't actually be in use while using this feature, so you have to lock your screen, and then you are able to start using this. So I'll click Connect. And you can see I now just have my iPhone right here and I can go into any app that I want just like that. So it's a pretty cool feature for specific use case situations, especially if you need to authenticate something from your iPhone, but you don't have your iPhone in the same room for two factor authentication, these type of things, this could be really handy. Okay, now I want to talk about some accessories for your Mac. So of course, USB-C is a big part of this Mac and this allows you to connect it to a ton of different devices and accessories. You can connect USB-C directly into a monitor or you can also use your HDMI, of course. So at some point you'll probably want a USB-C hub. You can get them that have all sorts of different peripherals such as you, know, you have another SD card, a micro SD, HDMI, ethernet, USB-A, USB-C and more. And these will plug directly into your Mac. And then you have a bunch more accessories available. If you're like me and you use lots of USB-C SSDs, you can actually get uh, just a USB-C extender with power delivery, which means it will actually allow you to connect several USB-C accessories to this more than just the three that gives you by default. Now, something I use all the time with my Mac, in fact, every single day because I'm a video editor, is a USB-C SSD. So if you're ever looking to expand the storage, 
or have a drive that you can take in and out more often, you're going to want a USB-C SSD. They're pretty affordable these days. My favorite of late has been this Crucial X10 drive. It's tiny, it's very fast, and gets up to four terabytes, which I have here. Samsung also makes some very reliable options. And what I'm actually doing for the first time is installing one of these stick-on pouches to the back of my Mac so I can have my drives connected but stored on the back of my computer. So if I move my laptop around, I don't worry about it disconnecting. There is no sponsor of this video. This is just a product I wanted to check out, but I'll give it a shot. Here goes nothing. All right, so that is now installed. And yeah, I'll give it a gander. Now, if you're looking for a great mouse to go with your new M4 MacBook Pro, there's tons of cheap options available, but the two I can recommend are absolutely phenomenal. My go-to favorite for all my work every day when video editing is the Logitech MX Master 3S, specifically made for Mac, and it really matches the black uh, Mac with this color profile, super ergonomic with lots of buttons and controls and great software to go with it. It is a little bit more expensive than a lot of your standard mice, but I think it's totally worth it if you're doing a lot of work on your Mac. And then when I need something more portable, I go with the MX Anywhere 3 for Mac, which is very similar, a little bit less ergonomic and just a little bit smaller, still with those customizable buttons and you can connect it with the software. So both really great options if you're looking for mice for your Mac. Now, if you're looking for a carrying case, I've been using this Moft one for years. As you can tell, it is a little bit beat up, which I'm happy to say it's held up pretty well. Now, for the most part, it's a pretty standard case. You open it up, slide your computer in, and that's it. It does have a little pocket here to store, you know, like a business card or something small, maybe a credit card or cash, and then a little pocket here with this stretchy material, this elastic that allows you to store maybe some headphones or uh, a USB drive or anything, or any cables or things like that. But what I really like about this is that it does fold into a bit of an origami shape so that you can use it to mount your Mac when you're working so you have a little bit of an elevated angle, which is a really great feature. So I'll leave all of these products that I mentioned down in the description. Okay, and that is it for this M4 MacBook Pro tips and tricks. If I'm gonna be honest, I find Apple intelligence a little bit underwhelming, but let me know if you found any really useful circumstances for it. Thanks so much for watching, and let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.